Thank you. First, I'd like to acknowledge Senator Blumenthal and earlier Senator Nelson. I think the one principal thing you'll learn today, Senator, is that the chairs there are less comfortable than the chairs here. Uh, but I welcome you to the hearing. Uh, Mr. Comey, a broad question. Um, was the Russian activity in the 2016 election a one-off proposition, or is this part of a long-term strategy? Will they be back? Oh, it's a long-term practice of theirs. It, it stepped up a notch in a significant way in 16. They'll be back. I think that's very important for the American people to understand that this is, this is very much a forward-looking investigation in terms of how do we understand what they did and how do we prevent it. Would you agree that that's a big part of our role here? Yes, sir. And it's not a Republican thing or a Democratic thing. It really is an American thing. They're going to come for whatever party uh, they choose to try and uh, work on behalf of. And they're, they're not devoted to either, in my experience. They're just about their own advantage. And they will be back. That's my observation. I don't think Putin is a Republican or a Democrat. He's an opportunist. I think that's a fair statement. Uh, with regard to the, uh, several of these conversations, in his interview with Lester Holt on NBC, the president said, I had dinner with him. He wanted to have dinner because he wanted to stay on. Is this an accurate statement? No, sir. Did you in any way initiate that dinner? No. He, call, he called me at my desk at lunchtime and asked me, uh, was I free for dinner that night? I called himself and said, uh, can you come over for dinner tonight? And I said, yes, sir. He said, will six work? I think he said six first. And then he said, I was going to invite your whole family, but we'll do that next time. I wanted you to come over. And is, is that a good time? I said, sir, whatever works for you. And then he said, uh, how about 6.30? And I, I said, whatever works for you, sir. And then I hung up and I had to call my wife and break a date with her. I was supposed to take her out to dinner that night. Uh, and That's uh, one of the all-time great excuses for breaking a date. Yeah. <laughs> In retrospect, I would have, I love spending time with my wife. I wish I'd been there that night. That's one question I'm not going to follow up, Mr. Cohen. But in that same interview, the president said, in one case, I called him, and in one case, he called me. Is that an accurate statement? No. Did you ever call the president? No. I, I might. The only reason I'm hesitating is I think there was at least one conversation where I was asked to call the White House switchboard to be connected to him. But I, I never initiated a communication with the president. Uh, and in his press conference on May 18th, the president was asked whether he had urged you to shut down the investigation into Michael Flynn. The president responded, quote, no, no. Next question. Is that an accurate statement? I don't believe it is. Thank you. Um, with regard to the question of him being under personal, personally under investigation, uh, does that mean that the dossier is not being reviewed or investigated or followed up on in any way? I obviously can't come, I can't comment either way. I can't talk in an open setting about the investigation as it was when I was the head of the FBI. And obviously it's, it's Director Mueller's, Bob Mueller's responsibility now, so I just, I don't know. So clearly your statements to the president back in those, these various times when you assured him he wasn't under investigation were as of that moment. Is that, that correct, is it correct. not? Correct. Uh, now, on the Flynn investigation, is it not true that Mr. Flynn was and is a central figure in this entire investigation of the relationship between the Trump campaign and the Russians? I can't answer that in an open setting, sir. Uh, and uh, certainly Mr. Flynn was part of the so-called Russian investigation. Can you answer that question? I have to give you the same answer. All right. Uh, we'll be having a closed session shortly, so we will follow up on that. In terms of his comments to you about, uh, I think you were in response to Mr. Risch, Senator Risch, you said, he said, I hope you will hold back on that. But when you get a, when a president in the United States in the Oval Office says something like, I hope, or I suggest, or, or would you, do you take that as a, as a, as a directive? Yes. Yes. It rings in my ear as kind of, will no one rid me of this meddlesome priest? It, I was just going to quote that in 1170, December 29, Henry II said, who will rid me of this meddlesome priest? And then the next day he was killed. Thomas a. Beckett, that's exactly the same situation. You're, we're thinking al along the same lines. Uh, several other uh, uh, questions, and these are a little bit more detailed. What do you know about the Russian bank VEB? Nothing that I can talk about in an open setting. Well, I, mean, I know it takes I know care it of my next three questions. I know it exists, <laughs> yes, sir. You know it exists. Uh, 
what is the relationship of ambassador, uh, uh, the ambassador from Russia to the United States to the Russian intelligence uh, infrastructure? Well, he's a diplomat who is the chief of mission at the Russian embassy, which employs a robust uh, cohort of intelligence officers. And so surely he's witting of their very, very aggressive intelligence operations, at least some of it, in the United States. I don't, I don't consider him to be an intelligence officer himself. He's a diplomat. Did you ever, did the FBI ever brief the Trump administration about the, the uh, advisability of interacting uh, directly with Ambassador Kislyak? I think all I can say sitting here is there were a variety of defensive briefings given to the incoming administration about the counterintelligence risk. Back to Mr. Flynn, would, the, would closing out the Flynn investigation have impeded the overall Russian investigation? No, it, well, unlikely except to the extent, there's always a possibility if you have a criminal case against someone and you bring it and squeeze them, you flip them and they give you information about something else. But I saw the two as uh, touching each other, but separate. Uh, with regard to your memos, isn't it true that in a, in a court case when you're weighing evidence, contemporaneous memos and contemporane, contemporaneous statements to third parties are considered probative in terms of the, the, uh, the uh, validity of, of testimony? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.